anticipatory care planning to me is an approach where we're thinking ahead and working with the, the person who requires more care and also working with those that are um, round about them, their, their carers and, and their family. It's focusing on what's important to them. It's about being proactive rather than sort of waiting for a, any crisis to happen. It also enables professionals to work together to get the right kind of support in place that would help the individual. Anticipated care planning is a useful tool to try and attain what patients' views are so that we can really tailor our treatments to suit what they want us to do, rather than us as doctors saying what's important for them. It's looking at what's important to you, you know, recognising your views, your wishes, um, the supports that you may need, what works for you, what doesn't work for you, and, and help make sure that you're in the future, you know, if there's a time that you need extra support, that you're going to be able to access what would be known as person-centred care, you know, getting it right for you at the right time. For me, anticipatory care planning is beginning as soon as possible in the person's journey to talk to them about what they would wish in the future. Um, particularly in dementia, that process can change quite dramatically and we need to be able to speak to people as soon as possible. We're focusing anticipatory care planning on people with more complex needs, people with long-term conditions and probably people with more than one long-term condition. What we're particularly thinking about is making sure that we intervene in an appropriately early stage so that we can make sure that we can improve people's quality of life and also sort of optimise the, the outcomes for them. And I think what's important is that we consider anticipatory care planning as part of a pathway when people have got complex needs that are recognised through to end of life care. It's mainly aimed at people who are unable to communicate with staff. It could be people with dementia, it could be uh, people with learning disabilities, um, it could be just elderly people who are frail um, and they're unable to say what their wishes are. For some people um, it can be quite a black and white, you know, yeah, I'll you know, I'll get the booklet out, I'll fill it in, you know, I'll get my wishes and I'll get my fears recorded, I'll get what works recorded. For other people, they may have to think a bit more about it, you know, have lots of discussion with family, health professionals, and, and, and bringing in, you know, the kind of multidisciplinary team possible that's involved in their life. So it's maybe looking at, you know, nurses, it's maybe looking at specialists, you know, nurses which, which support them. It's all part of a journey for, for a lot of people. Um, you know, it's about having the discussion and the thoughts and, and, and getting that recorded um, in, in, in whatever way works for that person, because there is, no right or wrong and there's no correct way to do it. I've never found it straightforward. I think it's different for everybody that you speak to. Um, you've got to be very aware of the person and the responses that you get in each conversation. And sometimes it's about moving backwards to move forward. And sometimes you just have to let it go until the person's more ready to speak. I think it can be quite a challenging but a very rewarding process to set up an anticipatory care plan because it makes, I think it's quite an empowering process for the, uh, for the patient but it, therefore it can be a bit daunting for a, for a doctor but in the long run I think in my experience it's a helpful thing because then everybody's clear what's important to the person that matters most. If you're thinking of the benefits um, of an ACB for the individual, um, you know it very much keeps the person in control and it helps them plan and think about the future. Um, it, it kind of reassures and, and reduces maybe some anxiety about what's important for that person um, and, and that will be recognised and that that will be um, where possible um, that that will influence and, and inform decision making for, for doctors and nurses and, 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 and care agencies. As someone that's working in the community, it helps you to, to work with a, a whole range of other professionals so it's very much about multi-professional working and, and team working. I think the benefits of anticipatory care planning for other professionals, any professionals in health, social care or the third sector, uh, brings together um, all the disciplines in, in an integrated way. That means people are not um, perhaps moving it in the wrong direction for that person and always the person's at the centre when you have a plan. 
we're trying to mainstream the work around anticipatory care planning. Um, it is part of everybody's job now and increasingly it's linked in with the, the GP contract of course, um, but also it's part of the work around community nursing review and the HP service review. It's work that's been carried out within out of our services and increasingly we're working with secondary care to promote anticipatory care planning and through health and social care integration it is part of social care services work as well so it's very much around um, a cross-sector whole system working approach to anticipatory care planning so that everybody is aware and everybody can work together. If I was to sum up anticipatory care planning, it would be a, a tool for, for protecting and making clear patients' wishes. ACP is proactive thinking, it's, um, it's thinking ahead, it's being in control of your own care. I think I'd have to go back to the idea of this is important to me, 